Hi students, welcome to PhD Jobs and Admission. This is Gauri. So in this video, I am going to teach you about research methodology section of BRAOU PhD entrance test. So in this video, I am going to teach you about two types of hypothesis in research. Those are null and alternative hypothesis. And both of these hypothesis types are really very important because we are going to test only null hypothesis in the research. Okay. And that's why after viewing this video, all of your doubts will get clear regarding this topic because I'm going to teach you about by using uh, about this topic by using MCQs. But still, if you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment box. And on this topic, you will be asking more MCQs in the PhD entrance test at BRAOU. Okay. So before starting this session, I want to tell you that Global Online team provides you complete course on research methodology as in BRAOU PhD entrance test, you will be asked 50% MCQs on research methodology. So if you want to qualify PhD entrance test, then you need to score more marks in research methodology. So with the help of this course, you can score more marks in research methodology and qualify PhD entrance test. So students in this course, we are providing you full syllabus video lectures under which theory and MCQ lectures both are available. You will get full syllabus notes and mock tests. You will get more than 1500 MCQs revision PDF and all of these study materials are available in both the languages, Hindi and English. So basically students, we have 10 mock tests like this and each mock test contains 40 MCQs and that's why overall you can solve 400 MCQs in mock tests only. And by the use of this revision PDF, you can revise all the topics in a single PDF and you will be, uh, you know, getting 80% MCQs from this revision PDF only out of 100% MCQs in research methodology section of BRAOU PhD entrance test. And over here, the topics that I have mentioned like research aptitude, communication, data interpretation, information and communication technology, all of these topics are covered okay, in this complete course. And these topics are there in the syllabus of your research methodology section of PhD entrance test. Okay. So students, if you want to buy this course, then you can either download the global online app from the Play Store. For that, I have given the link in the description box of this video or else you can contact me through these WhatsApp numbers. OK, and the course fees are really very less, which are only 699 rupees. And in such a you know, low course fees, we are providing you step by step guidance at your each and every step of PhD admission at BRAOU and as well global online team provides you 100% passing guarantee that you can guaranteed qualify the PhD entrance test okay yes. start with our today's session given below are two statements statement 1 and statement 2 so let us see what are these statements the null hypothesis states that students will recall significantly more information on a Monday morning than on a Friday afternoon okay and what is statement 2? The alternative hypothesis states that there will be no significant, no significant difference in the amount recalled on a Monday morning compared to a Friday afternoon. So over here students, we need to answer the question like which of these statements are basically correct or incorrect all of you getting and as I as I have told you earlier in yesterday's video only that null hypothesis states basically about that there is no relationship between the two variables okay no relationship but alternative hypothesis states that there is relationship between the two variables but if we read both of these statements then within the null hypothesis part they have mentioned that there is significant you know relationship between the information on a monday morning okay and on a friday afternoon so there is basically the difference okay between the information grabbed by the student on a monday morning and as well information grabbed by a student on a friday morning friday afternoon basically but in the alternative hypothesis, the, they have stated that there is no any significant difference between these two things. And that's why exactly opposite statements have been, you know, stated over here. So in the place of null hypothesis, they have given the definition of alternative hypothesis. And in the place of alternative hypothesis, they have given the definition of null hypothesis. And that's why your correct answer should be one 
sorry should be two because both of these statements are incorrect all of you getting students because both of these statements are incorrect okay now next is a hypothesis that states zero difference or no difference between the parameter and its assumed value is known as so whenever a hypothesis states or us that there is no difference or zero difference between the parameter and its assumed value then what type of hypothesis is it whether it is simple hypothesis whether it is directional hypothesis or whether it is non directional hypothesis or whether it is null hypothesis okay so i as i have told you earlier in this video only that such kind of hypothesis is called as the null hypothesis so you can actually familiarize the word null so the meaning of null itself is zero okay so it means that there is di zero difference or there is zero relationship between the parameter and its assumed value okay what is simple hypothesis so basically simple hypothesis states as the you know exact relationship between the variables okay there are already okay whatever relationship between the variables already there okay exact relationship is going to be stated by simple hypothesis okay now what is directional hypothesis so basically directional hypothesis is the hypothesis which states about the result in one direction only okay it has only one direction and that's why this kind of hypothesis is tested by one tail test okay and i think we have seen this test as well in yesterday's video so for that you can refer to yesterday's video and what is non directional hypothesis so this is exactly opposite to the directional hypothesis okay because here the hypothesis does not uh, state about the direction of the results of the test and that's why this hypothesis is uh, you know uh, tested by two tail test okay two tail test and that's why your correct answer should be four students which is null hypothesis when a researcher rejects a true null hypothesis in his or her study and accepts the alternative hypothesis what type of error is likely so whenever a researcher rejects a true null hypothesis and accepts the alternate hypothesis then after that what type of error will occur as i have told earlier in previous video students that there are two types of error occur okay whenever we test the null hypothesis in the research process so those types of errors are type 1 error and type 2 error so basically students type 1 error occurs when we reject the true null hypothesis okay whenever we reject the true null hypothesis then in that situation type 1 error occurs and whenever type 2 error occurs then in that situation we are going to you know accept we are going to accept the false null hypothesis okay false null hypothesis so these two concepts are really important to all of you because on these concepts every time at each year, year you will be getting questions in the phd entrance test okay and that's why in this question your correct answer should be one that is type 1 error because the question asked regarding type 1 error itself because here we are going to reject the true null hypothesis over here and in that situation type 1 error occurs okay the probability of not accepting the null hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is acceptable is called so what is the probability of not accepting the null hypothesis and in that situation basically alternative hypothesis is acceptable so it means that here null hypothesis is false and that's why we are not accepting it okay so what is the probability of this kind of situation so whether it is a rejection range whether it is demarcation or whether it is normative incidence or whether it is power so students your correct answer should be power because power is the probability of rejecting null hypothesis when in fact it is false so whenever this null hypothesis okay 
okay is false actually it is false in reality and that's why we are rejecting it okay and the probability of rejecting this false null hypothesis is basically called as what power okay and that's why your correct answer should be 4 okay and that's why you can also say that power is the probability of avoiding type 1 error or power is the probability of not making type 2 error in simple words okay so there are lots of definition for power but in simple words you can say that power is the probability of not making type 2 error all of you getting now students what is this demarcation what is this so basically demarcation is the marking of limits or boundaries then what is this normative incidence? So basically normative, uh, normative incidence is taken from the normative data itself. Okay. And this is the data from a reference population that establishes a baseline distribution for score or measurement and against which score or measurement can be compared. Okay. And what is rejection range? Rejection range is also called as the critical, critical range. Okay. And this is the region. Uh, and is a set of values for test statistic for which null hypothesis is rejected. Okay, so it includes the values and for these values basically we are going to reject the null hypothesis. But for this question your correct answer should be 4 that is power. Next given below are two statements. Now here as well you have, be you have been given two statements statement 1 and 2. Okay, and we need to give the answers basically what are the statements correct from these two statements. Okay, now let us see what is statement 1. Type 1 error refers to the decision to reject the null hypothesis when it is incorrect. Okay, and what is statement 2? Sampling error occurs due to the violation of the principle of random sampling. So basically as we have seen earlier in this video that type 1 error error basically what is that this refers to the decision that we are going to reject the null hypothesis okay when it is basically true or correct okay but exactly opposite is given in this statement okay and that's why this statement becomes false and what is the second statement sampling error occurs due to the violation of the principle of random sampling okay so basically sampling error occurs due to the mistakes in the sampling techniques or due to the mistakes in choosing the wrong sample size all of you getting so sampling error does not occur due to the violation of the principle of random sampling and that's why this again statement becomes false so your correct answer should be one over here because both of these statements are false okay using an appropriate parametric test in a research project the researcher finds evidence to reject the null hypothesis in doing so which type of error is likely so basically a researcher did a particular parametric test in a research project and after doing the parametric test he finds the evidence that he need to reject the null hypothesis okay so whenever he is rejecting the null hypothesis then in that situation what type of error will occur so whether alpha error will occur or beta error will occur or both alpha and beta errors will occur or neither alpha not beta error will occur so basically students there are two types of error that i have told you earlier and those are type 1 error okay and type 2 error okay so again i am going to tell you about this so type 1 error occurs when we are going to reject the null hypothesis whenever it is true okay all of you getting null hypothesis and type 2 error occurs when we are going to accept the false null hypothesis okay so the probability of occurring type 1 error is called as alpha okay is called as alpha error or alpha 
and the probability of occurring type 2 error is called as the beta or beta error but in this situation basically researcher is going to reject the null hypothesis and he is not going to accept the null hypothesis and that's why over here type 2 error gets eliminated so the only remaining option will be type 1 error and its probability is what alpha error and that's why your correct answer should be 1 that is alpha error okay and as well students both the errors does not occur simultaneously in any research process okay so your correct answer should be 1 next given below are two statements statement 1 and statement 2 so let us see statement 1 in research null hypothesis when rejected offers the scope for accepting the alternative hypothesis or substantive research hypothesis okay and statement 2 is when the null hypothesis is rejected there will be chances for committing a beta rather than alpha error so now the statement one states that whenever uh, you know in a research process whenever we reject the null hypothesis then obviously it offers us the scope that we need to accept the alternative or substantive research hypothesis and this statement is correct because whenever we reject the null hypothesis then automatically we accept the alternative hypothesis okay because this is a rule okay and that's why this statement is correct but the second statement states that whenever we reject the null hypothesis then there will be chances for committing a beta error rather than alpha error but this statement is incorrect because as we have seen earlier in this video that whenever we reject the null hypothesis then there will be the chances for occurring type 1 error okay not type 2 error because within the type 2 error we are going to accept the null hypothesis we don't reject it and the probability of occurring type 1 error is itself what alpha okay and that's why over here there will be chances for committing alpha error okay there should not be beta error and that's why your correct answer should be 3 because over here statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect okay next a research scholar finds through statistical analysis that the value of t is significant what decision is warranted on the basis of this hypothesis so basically a research scholar is doing statistical analysis in his research process and after doing the statistical analysis he finds that the value of t is significant okay so based on this value of t which is significant okay what decision he will take about the hypothesis so whether he will reject the null hypothesis or whether he will accept the research hypothesis or whether he accept the null hypothesis or whether he reject the research hypothesis or whether there is no decision is warranted in respect to the research hypothesis so as i have told you earlier that whenever you know uh, we reject the null hypothesis then obviously we need to accept the research hypothesis and vice versa and null hypothesis basically states us that there is uh, no difference or no relationship between the variables but research hypothesis alternatively tells us that there is a difference or relationship between the two variables okay and over here after doing the statistical analysis researcher has got a uh, t value significant so it means that whenever we get the t value as a significant value then we need to accept the research hypothesis over here okay and that's why in this situation we need to reject the null hypothesis and that's why the two decisions is warranted over here on the basis of this hypothesis and these two decisions are that a null hypothesis should be rejected and research hypothesis should be accepted so your correct answer should be one that is a and b only okay next hypothesis in research means what is the meaning of hypothesis as i have told you earlier in the previous video as well hypothesis is the basically the prediction of the you know results of your whole research process 
okay and that's why whenever you are doing a proper prediction then this is a statement and basically this a uh, statement uh, includes a proper clarity about the variables under study it includes the clearly uh, you know definition about the proper relationship between the variables okay and that's why hypothesis is intellectual guess this is a brilliant guess and this is an intelligent guess all of these okay and that's why your correct answer should be one that is one two and three so hypothesis can't be a negative guess okay because if it would be a negative guess then how we can test it okay and that's why always it should be an intelligent then intellectual and brilliant guess a good hypothesis must possess the following main characteristics now over here they have given uh, some characteristics of hypothesis so we need to identify the main characteristics of a good hypothesis over here so let us see different characteristics hypothesis should be capable of being tested so it means that hypothesis should have testability so we we should be able to test the hypothesis a good hypothesis can defy law of nature so it means that good hypothesis you know deny the law of nature basically hypothesis should be clear and precise a good hypothesis permits of the application of deductive reasoning hypothesis should be unlimited in scope so basically students as we have seen earlier in yesterday's video that hypothesis should have testability it means that it should be you know a uh, capable or able to be get tested because we need to test the hypothesis so that we will get the final results of our whole research process and that's why hypothesis should be capable of being tested so this is one of the you know main characteristic of a good hypothesis good hypothesis can defy law of nature so this is basically incorrect because good hypothesis or uh, should able to you know clearly specify and you know permit the law of nature it should not uh, defy the law of nature all of you getting and hypothesis should be clear and precise yes this is again the main characteristic of good hypothesis because hypothesis should be clear and it should have clarity so that we can easily test it then hypothesis permits of the application of deductive reasoning deductive reasoning is the process or you can say approach of a, a research so in this approach basically you know we have an existing theory and based upon an existing theory we are going to uh, you know formulate a, a hypothesis and after that we are going to test the hypothesis by using different statistical techniques and after that finally we get the results okay so this is nothing but the whole uh, approach of deductive reasoning towards the research and basically good hypothesis permits this application of deductive reasoning for its testing okay because without deductive reasoning we can't test the hypothesis and that's why again this is the main characteristic of good hypothesis and the last one is incorrect because a hypothesis should be limited in scope okay it should not have unlimitations uh, in the scope okay that's why your correct answer should be two that is a c and d only because uh, a c d uh, these are the options which are the main characteristics of a good hypothesis okay so students thank you for watching this session i hope all of you understood exactly what is the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis and one more thing is that research hypothesis and alternative hypothesis both are equal okay because these are the you know similar phenomenons okay the another name for research hypothesis is alternative hypothesis and vice versa okay so don't confuse within this and one more thing is that you should uh, understand the concepts of what is exactly alpha and beta what are the type 1 and type 2 errors and whenever the test is uh, significant then in that situation which type of uh, hypothesis you need to accept and reject so all of these uh, things make uh, into consideration and after viewing this session if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment box